Hi everyone, for this video I am going to be colouring in this lovely globe picture. This is from um, the Rita Berman um, printout, Mina Risa de Europa, to go with her book. Um, and there we go, just getting it lined up for you. Um, I'm using my Castle Arts pencils for this, like I have for some of the other ones on this page. I'm going to start off by doing the actual globe itself and then we'll work on the background. Now what I've thought is this outside part here could be um, metallic and I'm going to have a go at making some gold. Now I haven't tried gold with my Castle Art so it's going to be a fun task. So I'm going to start with the burned umber. I will start with a really dark brown and I'm going to go through all the areas that I think would be um, sort of the shadiest I suppose the darkest and just put a little dash of this dark brown on them. Now because this is quite a long piece I'm going to do a larger area of the dark here like that and then I'm going to move, I'm not going to do any on any of this, round to here, we'll do a fairly dark bit here especially there, there'll be some shadow and coming out from here and then we'll continue this dark a little along here put a little bit on the bottom of there and there um, around here and around there under there quite a hard under there because I think that bit looks like it might be standing out slightly and on the edges of this base part so that's our first step. Now we t I usually do a sort of mid-brown colour. I'm just looking at what I've got here. I've got a sepia, which I think is slightly lighter, so I'm going to go with that. So, uh, just a touch in places. I need to make sure I don't do that bit because there's a gap behind the globe keep that. I'm going to do quite a big area underneath because this might be shaded from the actual globe itself. Under here, just a bit more here and here. And it's just about extending out that dark area really with a slightly lighter colour. Okay, now we're going to move on to more. Hmm, what have we got? I think we'll do this colour next. We'll go with this cinnamon, it's very slightly orangey, but I think it will work for us. So we'll just pull it in. Now the key with metallics, I always feel, is to leave some white to look like shine. We're not at that stage yet, somewhere around here we'll leave a tad of white. So it needs to be loads just needs to be enough to trick the eye. That's all there. I'm going to go in with some yellows now. I'm going to start with the yellow ochre light. So we've still got quite a brownie tinge to the yellow and that's exactly what I want for this. Now I always do my metallic so that the shine is sort of down the middle. For me that just makes it a bit easier for me to know where it is and but there are a lot of people who don't do it that way who choose a different place for the shine to be and it can look absolutely amazing but I just try and keep it a little bit simpler and I hope you can see it's starting to look a little bit more metallic-y I'm going to go in with a slightly darker yellow. Sorry, I'm just choosing. Not being hugely familiar with this yet, this set of pencils. The cadmium yellow next. So again, just building up that colour. Just moving it up and round so that we're covering more and more of the item.
So you can do this with any set of pencils. You can starting with brown and moving through to your um, yellows. And uh, it just takes a bit of practice. But uh, it's a lot of fun. Now, what am I going to go now? Golden yellow deep, I'm thinking. Just checking if it needs sharpening. Sorry, I'll show you. Now I'm going to go over the whole thing with this because it's really vibrant and I think it will help to blend it and make it look more gold. So we'll see how that works out for us. I'm not going to put as much under here because there's shadow. And here, this is going to be my last colour, so I'm carefully leaving a little bit of white, it's not loads. But it's enough, hopefully, to give the impression of some shine. Now, if you want a more antique to gold look, you put a bit more brown, a bit less yellow. But uh, for me, I feel that I need to darken this up a bit. So I'm going back to my cadmium yellow and putting a little bit more of that in towards the end of that there, because I think that's too bright. It doesn't look like there's any yellow up here. I'm just going to put a bit more on. So it's just about getting that balance. See here the white is on the top of this bit. So there we go. I think I'm going to leave that like that. I'm quite happy with that looking, <coughs> excuse me, that way. Now I'm going to do the water in the middle of our um, globe. I'm going to grab this teal green light to start with to do an initial layer of the blue. I may make this it, but I may add another colour. We'll see how it looks. Trying to make sure I do cover all the paper in case this is my only layer of colour. Just trying to make sure that I do only cover the water though. I don't go up over what's meant to be land. It's because there were lines going across as well. I don't want to get myself confused. When I'm talking, I'm always concentrating. <laughs> So this castle art set that I'm using is 72. I know they go up to 120. So I've got no idea which colours I am missing from my set. But I know some people who are more experienced with castle arts will know. But uh, I've got, it's a rather nice selection of colours. I still find it hard to choose which colour to use at times even though it's not 120 but I know I'll get to know it better it's like with my and polychromos when I first started choosing colours was tricky but once I got used to them I knew what I wanted for what job sort of thing it's, as I say it's just getting used to them really and you also get to know what works with what now I'm not going to do any more on that blue until I've done the other bits and pieces around it and then we'll see what works. Now we've got our palm trees and we need our trunk colour so I'm going to grab my Van Dyke brown and do the trunks of the trees and I'm also going to look and see if there's anything else that needs this colour because I don't want to have a huge huge range of different colours. Now imagine this globe is printed and they wouldn't necessarily use every colour in the box because it's expensive and difficult. So I'll just have a look and uh, try to limit our colour choices somewhat. Now we've got our green for our palm trees. Um, I not. I think they might be this sort of hooker's green colour. So I'm going to do them that colour anyway. And it'll also, because it's quite a dark green, they'll stand out from the water more, hopefully. And go over the top of the bits where I went over the lines. I'm very good at going over the lines. I think it's what I'm best at. It's my special skill. <laughs> that I just don't mind. 
for me it's not about perfection it's about having fun if you can produce a picture that you're really pleased with at the end that's a bonus just enjoy the process it's just relaxing and fun right so i'm going to do other all the other things that i think are going to be green in the same green as i said for the same reason i want a limited palette and um so and actually these trees will probably be this green to be honest but we've got these i think these are trees it's very round but i'm sure it's this one isn't so round i think this is a bush here that's what i reckon anyway now i'm not sure what color to do the land um i'm thinking maybe a green might work um but or with a yellowy color there's some mountains here so maybe it needs mm, no um, um sorry i'm trying to think um maybe i'll do the houses while i'm thinking then it won't be so um dull for you to wait um i'm gonna do the houses in terracotta that feels like the natural color for a house it's all sort of brick color i'm just gonna sharpen it i'm gonna go quite gently though because this looks like quite a dark intense color yeah it's quite orangey isn't it quite as brown as i was expecting but it's okay there's nothing wrong with it there we go and this house the same I'm going to do the roofs in grey, because most roofs are grey. Well, in the UK they are. So, I need to sharpen. It's very fine, the uh, detail on here, which is fine. I don't mind. But I just need to make sure I am sharp. There we go. I think I'm going to do this all as a sort of sandy colour. So I'm going to use the yellow ochre light, which I used for the gold, to do a layer all around here. Now, I think that will stand out from the gold because the gold's got so many other colours mixed in with it. So I think it will be fine. And we can put some brown in as well to sort of add some interest sort of details I guess I think it looks better than doing it green although a lot of land is green not all land is green and it just makes it different to the trees okay that's not that one now with our browns we Mm, I think I'm going to use the sepia, which again was one we used for the uh, gold. I think that'll be okay. And I'm just going to shade in a few areas so where it's sort of dotted. Where you've got lines and things. I'm just going to roughly scribble about really. Try and blend it in though a bit by going, by lightening your touch as you want to end that darker area and this bit I can do that dark these edges bit just to make them stand out they probably be lighter to be honest could be catching the light but you know I've done it that way so I think we're gonna leave that and move on to the outside now we've got this sort of area and then we've got this bit and I'm going to separate those two which is what I think was the intention so I'm thinking the very edge might be lighter than the outside um, I'm thinking a light blue and then a darker blue so I'm going to go in, this, the cobalt turquoise is the lightest blue. I'm going to use that very lightly up until these dots appear. Okay. I'm going to try to go 
a fairly even light layer of blue. It's not that easy. I am not going to achieve it 100% but I'm just going to give it a good go. What you have to think is every time you make a little teeny mistake it will be hidden by the time you've finished the whole picture. No one's going to be going, oh look you've missed a tiny dot there. We are all our own worst critics. We see all the errors in our work, other people don't. They don't look at your work looking for errors. Whereas you possibly do. Got a lot of yellow in here from the globe, but I'm not going to worry. Could try and erase it. I've got a little tiny eraser. I've got this um, Tombow, oh, upside down, Tombow Mono, which has got a little teeny eraser. But uh, even that might not be too small enough for this, but I'm not going to worry. I'm just going to leave it. I think before I do the rest of the background I'm going to do the stars because I think then they stand out. It could be tempting to do a um, pen for those, you know, a, a gold or silver gel pen, something like that. But I think if you've done, if you had an attempt at um, gold like I have on here, if you then use a gold pen it sort of spoils the illusion really. It doesn't work quite well. So I tend not to do that. So I'm just going to do them yellow. Um, you could do them grey to make them look silver, so they're different to this, but I don't think that's going to really look right. What I think I might do is go in with the yellow ochre light and do around the edge, I'm going to have to sharpen it, of each one, and then um, do a lighter colour in the middle so that we've got a bit of a transition of colour so they look more gold. This would be easier if they were bigger you know, up for a challenge I am. And this one is in this picture, which is really interesting to me. But I feel like these are sort of in the galaxy and they, this bit is like the sky. That's why I thought a light blue there. Then when we go out to this outside, we've got a darker galaxy type color going on. So I'm basically just doing a line around the very edge of each star. I'm not going to do it on those circles, they're really teeny, I can't speak. There's that one and then I'm going to grab the cadmium yellow and do the same thing but obviously bring the colour in towards the centre of it. Try not to go right to the centre but a bit more than we did. It can go over the top whoops of what you did already. I made that too sharp and pressed too hard. These aren't um these pencils definitely don't um behave badly. Um it's just me. That happens to me with every brand of pencil I use because I'm so heavy handed. I don't think there's any that I don't break. I'm trying to think just in case I can prove myself wrong. I don't think so. And the last one is our golden yellow deep. But I'm going to try and leave a tiny dash of white in the middle of each one. It's going to be really tricky, especially on these small ones. But I'm just going to go over the whole thing again, leaving a little bit in the middle. So it sort of looks like it's glowing. As I say, it may not really show up, but why not give it a go? They might show up more once the um, background is done because it's going to be darker. So you probably can't see. Now, I'm going to do the circles. Probably should have done those straight after sharpening sharpen again but I'm not going to. Just going to be careful. I'm never quite sure whether these circles should just be left and coloured over like the dots or whether they should be coloured in. Put the colouring them in. There we go. Right now for the darker blue we 
sky. Do I do blue or purple? Maybe I will do a Delft blue, which is a really nice shade. Oops, Delft blue. And I'm going to start on this margin line here and just fade it out. So I take that. Oh, I've gone over the circle. Try not to go over the stars and circles. Now I'm going to try and work out where the edge sort of is here so that I can uh, do a sort of square because these are all sort of square pictures. This one seems to join up to this one here so that's what I'm going to do. Keep, try and keep this edge quite light but it's sharp there. It's easier with a blunt uh, pencil to keep a lighter layer. So I want it darker here and then less as we go out here towards this uh, heart and love letter picture which I really enjoy doing I have to say. Sorry, I'm not talking much, I'm concentrating. It's not very exciting for you, is it? Sorry. So we'll take that up. I'm trying to think. We actually go all the way up to here. So I'm just going to take that up to there and gently fill that in. If you hold your pencil further down the barrel, barrel? I don't know if that's the right word. If you hold your pencil further down the pencil, you can, uh, it's easy to get a lighter touch with it because if you hold it near the tip you can push hard if you're holding it further down you can't get that kind of pressure so it just automatically produces a lighter um, mark which can be useful oh, I went over that circle as well. But I'm basically now just doing a light layer everywhere and then I'm gonna fill in these, make it darker where I want it darker after. I figured it was easier to do it that way. So I'm basically doing more layers here and pressing harder and then less as I come out towards that faint bit. So I'm just going to try and even it up a little bit so it looks evenly dark around the edge here and then a bit evenly light around the corners and further out. So I'm basically just fiddling around really with the um, amount of colour on here. If you do too much you can erase a little bit. That's uh, That should be okay. Erasing pencil is difficult but and it's often because it leaves a stain on the paper but you want this, some of this colour showing so that really won't matter too much if you gently erase just a little bit but try not to um, press overly hard because if you really burnish into the paper you know push down hard and it's, it's much harder to lift it back out again I think I'm nearly done now I'm just fiddling a bit yeah, I think I'm going to leave him there. So there is our globe. So I hope that was fun. I haven't, um, I do need to go back over that water, I've just noticed, on the edge of that tree. But I didn't decide to do another colour. I decided to just leave it. Now, 
When I do water, I sometimes use a white pen to emphasise these sorts of lines and things um, and to uh, give more of a sense of movement. But uh, I don't think it's necessary. I think the lines that are there, that are there, do that for us. I don't think I really need to do any extra with my white pen, but you could if you wanted to. And uh, there we go. That's better. So, uh, but uh, I'm just going to leave it like that. So there's our globe. So thank you very much for watching, and happy colouring.